In this video, we are going to get started with the Google Places API for Android. So currently, the only way we can search things in the app is by just straight up geolocating and then using the latitude and longitude to pinpoint a location. But the Google Places API is actually way more powerful. So something you can do is it'll actually give you search suggestions as soon as you start typing, and then you can choose the locations that come up here. That's just one of the features. Uh, another one of the features is it gives you way more information. You can get like phone numbers, websites, and things like that of addresses. Just way more functionality in general. So that's what we're going to get started in this with in this video. So we need to start, I guess, um, you should start in the documentation, I guess, technically, but I don't want to just read the documentation on video because there's actually a lot of stuff to read here. So I'm just going to kind of summarize everything for you. So to get started with the Google Places API, it's very similar to the Google Maps API, but you need to um, sign your key. So what that means is you need to click on the key and go to Android apps to make sure you only allow Android apps to use the key, and then you need to add your package and your SHA1 certificate for fingerprint. So we can get that stuff pretty easily. We just go into Android Studio, and to get the SHA fingerprint, we just go to Gradle over here, and we can run a signing report. So your view will probably look like this when you open it up. You might have to refresh it, click this refresh button, and then open up app, uh, open up tasks, Android, and then signing report. And that's going to run the signing report so that you can get your SHA key right here. Don't use mine. It will not work. Make sure to do your own signing report. And now let's go back to here and put in our SHA key. And now we're going to go back to Android Studio and we can get our package name. So let's go to any, any Java class, doesn't matter. And just grab the package name at the top here. And then paste the package into here. And then click add package name and fingerprint. Actually, you don't need to click that. So just, you have it already in there. And then we can click save. And just make sure you have Android apps selected. And actually, let's rename this to Google Maps and Google Places API. Or Google Maps and Google Places. Hit save. So there we have our API key for Google Maps and Google Places. Now, just like when we use Google Maps, we need to actually enable the Google Places API. So we go to Library, and we go to uh, Google Places API for Android, and then we just click Enable, just like we did with Google Maps. So there we go, and it's giving me a little warning here to use this API. You need credentials, but we already have credentials. Uh, we already have credentials right here, and we've also uh, added a restriction. So we've added a key restriction to only Android apps with this package name and this certificate. So we should be good. So let's go back to the documentation. And the one that we're going to get started with is the place autocomplete. And that's so that's going to be the one that is autocompleting the text here. So when I start typing things, it's giving me results based on what I've typed. That's the one I want to start with. Once we get that working, then we're going to work on the place picker API right here, but for now we're going to use the place autocomplete. So let's uh, actually click on place autocomplete and go over to the documentation. And if you try and read this, it's actually, I find it kind of hard to read this particular page. There's a lot of options here and not, none of these really fit what I want to do. Like this first option is embed an autocomplete uh, support fragment basically, which takes over your whole screen. So that's going to be what this looks like right here, which I don't really want. I, I want like, you know, just a little a little list coming down from my uh, text or edit text. Uh, the second option here is an intent, which basically does the same thing, but it, it opens up uh, once again another screen, but it, it uses an intent instead of a fragment. Um, then the third option is, uh, there's kind of a third option anyway, which is restrict the autocomplete results, which is down here. No, no, here, get place predictions programmatically. But this again still isn't really what I'm looking for because that doesn't give me that list that's popping down. So I was kind of looking around and I ended up finding the sample apps here. So I clicked here and go to the GitHub page. And here we go. So now if I look here, Google Places API for Android samples, there's actually a fourth option here that isn't really shown in the documentation that we were just looking at. And uh, this implements an Android autocomplete text view backed by the autocomplete API. See, that sounds like what I want. I just want a text view that is going to give me autocomplete suggestions. So that's the one that we want to click on right here. So uh, you can see the link up here if you want to take a look at it yourself, but uh, this is the one we want. So we can go into application, go into source, Java, 
uh, this folder here. And this is, we need to copy this whole class completely, this place autocomplete adapter. This is what we're after. So I'm going to copy this whole thing all the way down to the bottom. Copy the whole thing. Now I'm going to go into Android Studio. And wow, we're going to close a whole bunch of this stuff. Uh, so we're going to create a new class. So right click, new Java class, and uh, what was it called? The autocomplete adapter, place autocomplete adapter. And inside here, I'm literally pasting everything I just copied. So it looks, there's going to be a whole bunch of red to start with. Uh, get So just get rid of this package, because we're using my package, obviously. And get rid of that. We can tab all this stuff in. There we go. So most of the red is gone. There's actually only just a little tiny bit down at the bottom here. And what else do we got? Oh, log tag can only be at most 24 characters. So minor error. We just need to change our log up here. Uh, I'll just say place auto complete. Complete adapter. And what do we got here? Make it not public? Okay. Wait, why can't we make that public? I think I spelled, I probably spelled something wrong. Copy that name right there. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's refactor this. Refactor, you can't. A rename file. Refactor. There. Okay, so now we have our adapter. And uh, this, so this is what is going to basically, this is our adapter for the list that's going to handle all our drop down options right here. So luckily there was a Google sample for this whole thing because this, there's a lot of code here and I'm not even going to go into it. I'm just saying straight up copy it. Uh, you saw the link that I looked at right here. Uh, I guess I will put a link in the, no, I don't even, I mean, you saw how I got to it. Go to getting started, autocomplete, and then uh, sample apps and then GitHub page and so on. Now we need to change our text view, our edit, our edit text widget to an autocomplete widget. So let's go into the activity map and we are gonna change our edit text to an autocomplete text view. And then we of course need to go into our, whoops, our map activity and we need to change that widget uh, wherever it is, here. So to an autocomplete, autocomplete text view and paste that down there. So that should be all good. So now sort of the next step is going to be creating our adapter object and then setting it to our, our autocomplete text view. So let's uh, start by creating the object. So private place autocomplete adapter. We'll call it m place autocomplete adapter, sure. And uh, so let's go to initialize this and see what we need. So we go m auto place uh, autocomplete adapter equals new place autocomplete adapter. And we can see it needs a context, a Google API client, a latitude and longitude bounds, and then the autocomplete filter. So we need a lot of stuff here. Context is easy, obviously, but we need the Google API client. We need latitude and longitude bounds, which should be easy to get. And then we need to create this, this filter object that it's referring to here, which actually we can just pass a null for now. So we need this Google API client. That's really what we're after. So let's head back to the documentation and see what it says about this, this Google API uh, object, client object that we need. So here's we're back at the getting started guide for the Google Places API. I'm just going to search Google client or Google API client. And it takes me down here to an example. And here we go. This is connect to Google Play services 11 or later. So this is exactly what we're looking for right here. So it looks like we need to implement an on connection failure listener, and then we can get our Google API client just like this. So I'm literally just going to copy this and go back to Android Studio. And I'm going to paste it in the init method. And I need to, let's see, I need to implement the interface. So let's go up to the top and do comma on connection failed listener and do implement methods on connection failed listener and I'm going to snip that I'm going to bring it to the very top because that's where I like to put my interface methods and let's see here so then that error goes away you'll notice uh, now it knows the, what the, where the connection failure listener interface is now we need to create our Google API client object so let's just go here do private 
Google API client and paste that name in and there we go. So now we have our Google API client and that's we've done everything the documentation has told us. So now we can go this for the context. We can pass our Google API client and what's next? Uh, next is the bounds. So we need to create a latitude and latitude boundary object. So let's go up to the top and I wish you didn't have to do this but they require it. So we're just going to create a global variable. So private static final uh, it'll be a latitude and longitude bounds object and I'll just say I guess lat long bounds and that's going to equal new lat long bounds and so the first parameter is a latitude long longitude object and I'm just going to put negative 40 negative 168 and obviously I've done this ahead of time so I know what uh, coordinates I need to put in here but basically I'm just putting in two random coordinates so I basically encompass the entire world that's all it is so I'm gonna now copy that latitude and longitude bounds and put it here and then we're gonna pass null for the filter and I'm gonna do a hard return and there we go so now we have our autocomplete adapter object created now we just need to set the adapter to our autocomplete text view so M what do we call it M autocomplete or oh, search text search text dot set adapter and then m place autocomplete adapter and so now anytime we type into that search field it should give us autocomplete suggestions and I can see we have an error here somewhere oh that brackets not needed okay so I think we're good now we can actually run it and see what we get so change that to app alright so click on map get map is ready now let's start typing uh, let's start typing Universal Studios. There we go. So now it's actually giving us suggestions. So I don't think right now if we click, yeah, so if we click it doesn't do anything. Uh, we don't have that functionality set up yet, but the suggestions are coming through, which is awesome. So I can start typing like Walmart, and that will also look up things that are close. Okay, cool. So at this point, the auto suggestions are working just as we expect. Um, just to kind of review everything, you basically get the adapter from the Google samples and then you create the adapter object we get our Google API client object pass it to the adapter and then we just set the adapter to our search text our autocomplete text view widget and make sure that you guys are getting your own API keys because it won't work if you use mine um, and yeah other than that we're ready to move on to the next section which will be now when we click on one of these suggestions it will then redirect the camera to that location and get us some more information on that particular location. So I'll see you guys in that next video.